Have you ever found an injured bird that needed help? Well, the other day while we were working in our Canadian forest garden, we came across something we really never expected to find. We found a hummingbird stuck in a burdock flower. And so for this unexpected hummingbird rescue, we broke a lot of rules. But in order to understand why, first we need to look at how hummingbirds live. Hummingbirds getting stuck to burrs is not a usual thing. Usually hummingbirds fly with such precision that they can change directions in a heartbeat. They can fly forwards, backwards, and even hover in place. Did you know that their wings beat more than 50 times per second? That's where the hum comes from. When it comes to the ruby-throated hummingbird, males and females look very alike. The difference is the males have a bright red ruby throat. Also, kind of cool fact, their legs are so short, they actually can't walk. The best they can do is kind of shuffle along on the branch. A lot of people don't realize that we have ruby-throated hummingbirds here in Canada. They're actually only here in the summer because in the winter, they fly over 2,000 miles to Mexico and Central America. And as many of us know, they love the color red. But it's good to know that they will eat from flowers that have other colors too. Their metabolisms are so fast that their hearts can beat 1,200 beats per minute. To put that in contrast, a human heart, even if you are running top speed and getting totally out of breath, only beats about 200 beats per minute. Because their metabolism is so fast, they must eat all day long in order to survive. In fact, they have to eat every 10 to 15 minutes and will visit between 1 and 2,000 flowers in a day. A super cool fact that not many people know is that their tongue is actually forked a bit like a snake's, and it's so long that it wraps around their skull when it's inside their head. Like Woodpeckers. Yeah. Cool. Good. Oh, thank you. And so going back to our hummingbird rescue story, it was close to sundown and I was out in the garden getting some greens for dinner. Just a little more drama. It was approaching sundown when I was out in the garden getting some greens for dinner. When I heard this strange sound, it was like this buzzing. <laughs> And I noticed that something was moving. And as I got a little bit closer, there was this hummingbird that was very tangled up in some burdock flowers that were closing into burrs. And so the first thing we decided to do was snip the burdock flower off of the plant so Which, that we would have a little more uh, ability to maneuver. Now, Brittany had to do this very carefully in order to not further injure the bird. We still don't know how it got stuck to the burdock flower after a really, really long time of carefully removing the burr from the hummingbird. Uh, he was finally free. So once he was free, we had to decide what to do with them. So while we are not vets, to our eye, it looked like he was utterly exhausted and possibly had a broken wing. Now, probably important to mention that we're about a two hour drive away from the nearest wild bird rescue center. And so the number one rule about bird rescues is you do not feed them. You bring them to the wildlife center and they will know what to do. Most birds can actually go quite a long time without food. So if this was chickadee or an owl, we definitely would have followed those rules. But this is a hummingbird. Hummingbirds can die in just a few short hours if they don't have any food. So the question we had was, how long had it been hanging there for? And so we were faced with a dilemma. Follow the rules and don't feed the wild bird or risk having it die on the drive. And so we broke the rules. So in this particular instance, we decided it was more important to get the hummingbird eating. So we decided to make him some nectar. However, we had to let it cool. So in the meantime, Augie was kind enough to go get me some bee balm flowers from the garden. We knew that he was starting to do better when he started perching on our hands and was able to hold himself up. And so after a while of feeding him flower after flower after flower, the nectar had cooled and it was time to give him the good stuff. The next problem we had was that the Wild Bird Care Center was closed, so we would have to wait until the next day. It is illegal to keep wild animals indoors overnight. But bringing him indoors was the only way that we could figure out to keep him warm and safe. We set him up in a container in a quiet, dark place. Eventually, it was lights out for everyone and we just had to hope for the best. But wait, you ask, what about sleep? So if they die after a few hours without food, 
We knew that he needed rest and quiet to heal, and we decided to take our chances and just let him sleep. After all, hummingbirds do have to sleep all night in the wild. And so the next morning, we woke up really early, and uh, the hummingbird didn't look so good. No. We, we actually thought he might be on his way out. However... It turns out that the ruby-throated hummingbird has a really neat evolutionary advantage. They actually go into something called torpor. Now that is like a mini hibernation that they go into every single night in the wild. Sometimes they go into such a deep sleep that they are even found hanging upside down on branches. The interesting thing is they can actually appear dead and won't respond to touch. He was just still coming out of torpor. It took him about 20 to 30 minutes and then he came around. By the way, there is a reason why they say not to feed injured birds yourself. Many birds have very, very special diets. Hummingbirds, while we know they eat nectar from plants, actually eat half their body weight in insects every day, which showed us that there was no way we were going to meet his mm -hmm. nutritional needs and uh, we needed to get on the road. And so on the two hour drive, we got to discussing how could we better help hummingbirds. After all, they can have a very difficult life here in Canada. Now, the moral of the story is not that burdock is dangerous for hummingbirds. Many pollinators love and even rely on it. Besides, we've been growing burdock for years and this is the first time such a thing has ever happened. Some things you can do to help hummingbirds is, of course, hang feeders out. Make sure to keep them fresh and clean. Better yet, you can plant hummingbird-friendly flowers. Check out the list in the description below. And, of course, you can also send a donation to the Wild Bird Care Centre in Ottawa or your local wildlife rehabilitation. Center. In honor of this brave little bird and all the other hardworking hummers out there, we're making our usually exclusive kids hummingbird activities available for free. We invite you to check out the link in the description below. After two hours, we finally arrived. And they promised to take very good care of him. No ruby neck. Ruby neck. 